In late summer of 1921, young film actress Virginia Rapp attended a party hosted by Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. Attending with a friend, Maude Delmont, Rapp reportedly overindulged in alcohol and fell severely ill soon after. Over the course of three days, she suffered violent abdominal pain before ultimately passing away on Friday due to complications from a ruptured bladder. Peritonitis had set in, causing inflammation of the membrane lining the inner wall of the abdomen. Distraught and distressed, Delmont immediately filed a complaint against Arbuckle, accusing him of responsibility for Rapes' untimely death. Soon after, authorities arrested and charged the actor with murder. In the early days of cinema, one actor who stood out for his comedic timing and physical comedy was Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. He became a popular figure in silent films and was known for his work, both in front of and behind the camera. One notable scene featuring the actor can be found in the 1915 silent film Short Mabel and Fatty viewing the World's Fair in San Francisco. As the title suggests, the film follows the exploits of Mabel Normand and Roscoe Arbuckle as they explore the sights and sounds of the World's Fair in San Francisco. Around seven minutes into the movie, there is a memorable shot that highlights the actor's presence and the impressive set design of the time. The camera slowly pans to the right, revealing the exterior of the St. Francis Hotel, which looms large in the frame. As it moves upward, viewers get a sense of the grandeur of the building and its intricate architectural details. This stunning visual effect would have been particularly impressive for audiences of the day used to simpler sets and cinematography techniques. Arbuckle himself does not appear in this particular shot, but his influence on the film is undoubtedly present throughout. His signature style of humor and slapstick antics had already endeared him to fans by this point, making him a beloved figure in Hollywood's burgeoning film industry. Despite facing personal controversies later in life, the legacy of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle remains intact. His contributions to the art of film were significant, and scenes like the one described here serve as a reminder of his impact on the medium. Even today, over a century after he first graced the silver screen, we can still appreciate the talent and charisma that made him a star. In the film, the window of room 1219 at the St. Francis Hotel makes a brief appearance. Little did the actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle know that this room would soon be associated with scandal and tragedy. Over the 1921 Labor Day weekend, the actor's life took a dark turn. An incident occurred in that very room, linking Arbuckle's name to assault and murder. The details of what transpired that weekend have been the subject of much speculation and debate over the years. The incident involved a young woman named Virginia Rapp, who was found seriously injured in room 1219 and later died. Arbuckle was accused of assaulting and causing her death, and the ensuing trial captured the nation's attention. Despite being acquitted and declared innocent by the jury, the actor's career was irreparably damaged. The scandal surrounding the incident tarnished his reputation, and he struggled to find work in the film industry. The St. Francis Hotel and Room 1219 will forever be linked to the tragic events of that Labor Day weekend in 1921. The incident serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of fame and the dangers of speculation and sensationalism. In 1921, the life of beloved actor and comedian Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle took a drastic turn when he was accused of a serious crime. This incident led to a series of sensational trials that would ultimately bankrupt him, ruin his career, and introduce a controversial concept to Hollywood, moral clauses. Arbuckle had been attending a party in a San Francisco hotel room when a young woman named Virginia Ray fell ill and later died. Rumors quickly spread that Arbuckle had assaulted her, leading to his arrest and indictment for manslaughter. The ensuing trials captivated the Prohibition-era public, who were eager for entertainment amidst the dry spell of alcohol. The case became the first major media circus since the city's devastating earthquake in 1906, drawing large crowds and extensive press coverage. Despite the lack of concrete evidence against Arbuckle, the jury failed to reach a verdict in the first two trials. By the third trial, however, the actor's reputation had already suffered significant damage. Although he was eventually acquitted, the jury issued a statement expressing their belief that Arbuckle was innocent, but had been guilty of gross negligence. The scandal also brought about a significant change in the movie industry. Following the trials, studios began including morality clauses in actors' contracts, allowing them to terminate employment if the individual engaged in behavior deemed detrimental to the studio's image. Throughout the proceedings, Arbuckle maintained his innocence, but the court of public opinion remained firmly against him. His career never recovered from the negative attention 
and he passed away just six years after the trials ended. Despite the tragic circumstances surrounding the end of his career, Arbuckle remains a celebrated figure in early cinema history, known for his slapstick comedy and innovative filmmaking techniques. Renowned for his exceptional talent and towering presence, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle stood out in the world of early Hollywood. Long before he became a household name, Roscoe Conkling Arbuckle was born on March 24, 1887, in the modest town of Smith Center, Kansas. His parents, Mary and William Arbuckle, were slight in build, but destiny had other plans for their newborn son. Weighing in at a whopping 13 to 16 pounds, the young Roscoe entered the world with a presence that would foreshadow his future career. His sheer size and natural charisma would eventually earn him the nickname Fatty, a name that would stick with him for the rest of his life. As Roscoe grew, so too did his passion for performing. His parents, unaware of the stardom that awaited their son, encouraged his love for the arts. Little did they know that their slight frames would give way to a prodigious talent who would one day be paid more than any other actor in Hollywood. Indeed, Roscoe's natural talent and infectious charm would propel him to the top of the industry. In 1922, he signed a $3 million contract, an unprecedented sum at the time. This contract solidified his place as a true Hollywood heavyweight, both literally and figuratively, but even as his fame and fortune grew, Roscoe never forgot his humble beginnings. Born to parents who instilled in him the values of hard work and dedication, he remained grounded and focused on his craft. And so, the story of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle continues to resonate, a testament to the power of perseverance and the enduring appeal of classic Hollywood. His legacy lives on, etched into the annals of film history, a reminder of a time when the silver screen was ruled by giants. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's early life was marked by familial rejection and loss. His father, unable to accept Roscoe as his own, shunned him from a young age. This rejection was made even more devastating by the circumstances surrounding his birth. Roscoe's mother, Mary Arbuckle, endured a difficult labor and ultimately passed away just 12 years later. Upon his mother's death, Roscoe's father cut him off completely, leaving the young actor without any support or resources. Roscoe's mother had been his rock and her loss was a devastating blow. To make matters worse, Roscoe's maternal grandmother also passed away when he was just 11 years old. As a result of these tragedies, Roscoe was left to navigate the world on his own from a young age. Despite the challenges he faced, he went on to become a successful actor and comedian known for his comedic timing and physical comedy. But the pain of his father's rejection and the loss of his mother and grandmother never truly left him. These early experiences shaped him in profound ways, leaving a lasting impact on his life and career. Even as he found success in the world of film, the trauma of his childhood continued to haunt him. When the Arbuckle family relocated to Santa Ana, Roscoe was just eight years old. It wasn't long before his classmates cruelly began calling him Fatty, a nickname that would unfortunately stick with him throughout his life. However, this didn't stop Roscoe from pursuing his passion for performance. In fact, it may have even fueled his drive to prove himself. One day, fate intervened when Frank Bacon's vaudeville company came to town. They were looking for fresh talent and decided to take a chance on young Roscoe. Much to their delight, he quickly became a crowd favorite, winning over audiences with his comedic timing and natural charisma. This opportunity allowed Roscoe to escape the harsh realities of bullying and find solace in the art of making people laugh. And so, the stage became his sanctuary, providing him with a much-needed escape from the cruel taunts of his peers. Little did anyone know, this classic underdog story was only just beginning. After finding himself in need of work and a place to stay, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle found employment at a local hotel, where he worked in exchange for room and board. During his time at the hotel, he would often sing and entertain guests during his free time. His natural singing talent quickly caught the attention of those around him, eventually earning him invitations to perform in the hotel bar. It wasn't long before Sidney Grauman, the owner of the famous Unique Theater in San Francisco, heard about the actor's impressive vocal abilities. Intrigued by what he had heard, Grauman decided to invite Arbuckle to perform at his theater. This opportunity marked the start of Arbuckle's career in the entertainment industry and set him on a path towards becoming one of its most beloved figures. As Arbuckle continued to hone his craft, he began appearing in films and shows across the country. His unique comedic style 
and undeniable charm made him a hit with audiences everywhere. And soon enough, he became known as the funniest man in America. Despite facing numerous challenges throughout his life, including legal troubles and personal loss, the actor persevered, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and delight fans to this day. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's career as a comedic actor began to take off when he started traveling with the Panages Theater Group. It was during this time that he met his future wife, actress Minta Durfee. The two married in 1980, and their relationship further solidified Arbuckle's presence in the world of early Hollywood. In 1999, Arbuckle's career reached new heights when he embarked on a tour of China and Japan with the Pantages Theater. This international exposure allowed him to connect with a wider audience and establish himself as a global star. Paramount, one of the major film studios of the time, recognized Arbuckle's earning potential and offered him a lucrative contract. He was paid 1000 per day, plus royalties, making him one of the highest paid actors in the industry. This recognition from Paramount further cemented Arbuckle's status as a successful and influential figure in early Hollywood. Despite the controversies that would later mar his career, Arbuckle's early success with the Panages Theater and his recognition by Paramount solidified his place in the annals of film history. His comedic timing and physical comedy skills made him a beloved figure in the industry, and his influence can still be seen in modern comedy today. In 1918, the film industry was buzzing with excitement as Paramount offered Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle a lucrative contract. The sum was a staggering $3 million for 18 movies over three years, making Arbuckle the highest paid actor after Charlie Chaplin. This was a significant milestone in Arbuckle's career, cementing his status as a leading figure in the world of silent films. Meanwhile, on July 7, 1895, in Chicago, Illinois, a star was born who would later cross paths with Arbuckle. Virginia Rapp, an aspiring actress, entered the world at a time when the film industry was on the brink of significant change. As Rapp grew up, she was drawn to the glamour and excitement of the burgeoning movie scene. The lives of these two individuals, Arbuckle and Rapp, would eventually intersect in a way that would shock the nation and leave a lasting impact on the film industry. But for now, they were each forging their own paths, unaware of the dramatic turns their lives would take in the years to come. At the tender age of 14, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's life took an exciting turn when he began posing for local artists and fashion designers in his hometown. His natural talent and charisma quickly made him a favorite, and he soon found himself in high demand. This early exposure to the world of design and modeling would prove to be invaluable in his future career. Not long after, Roscoe became engaged to a talented dress designer named Robert Moskowitz. The two shared a deep passion for fashion and design, and their relationship seemed destined for success. However, fate had other plans. One day, while crossing the street, Robert was tragically killed in a streetcar accident. Devastated by the loss of her fiancé, Roscoe made the difficult decision to leave San Francisco and start anew in Los Angeles. She was determined to pursue a career in film, and Los Angeles was the place to be. With nothing but her talent and determination to guide her, Roscoe set out to make a name for herself in the bustling city. Despite the many challenges she faced, Roscoe persevered. She worked hard to hone her craft, and it wasn't long before she began to make a name for herself in the film industry. Her talent and charisma were undeniable, and she quickly became a beloved figure in Hollywood. Today, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle is remembered as a trailblazer in the world of film and fashion. Her tragic past only serves to make her story all the more inspiring as she overcame great adversity to achieve her dreams. Her legacy continues to resonate with aspiring actors and designers to this day. In the early days of cinema, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle was a prominent figure in the silent film era. He worked with many notable artists of the time, including Julian Eltinge and Rudolph Valentino. Virginia Rapp, a talented actress, was also part of this circle. She found love with Hollywood director and producer Henry Lehrman, who ensured she had work in the industry. Virginia's style and grace were recognized in 1919, when she received an award for being the best dressed girl in pictures. This recognition was a testament to her elegance and the impact she had in shaping the fashion of the time. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's career was filled with successful films and shows. His comedic timing and physical comedy skills made him a favorite among audiences. This classic actor's work transcended the boundaries of the silent film era and is still cherished today. The love story between Virginia and Henry added a romantic element to the bustling world of early Hollywood. Despite the challenges of the industry, they found love and support in each other. 
Their story is a small but significant part of the larger tapestry of the silent film era. In the end, the silent film era was a vibrant and captivating time in the history of cinema. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, Virginia Rape, and Henry Learman were just a few of the many artists who made significant contributions to this world. Their work and stories continue to resonate with audiences today, marking their place in the annals of history. The Labor Day weekend of that year was an exciting time for the actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle and his friends. They had planned a party at the St. Francis Hotel, a popular destination for social gatherings. The party was not an ordinary one, as the friends had managed to procure a bootleg case of gin, defying the prohibition laws of the time. The news of the party spread, and soon, Virginia and her friend Bambina Maud Delmont arrived at the venue, joining other revelers who were eager to have a good time. The atmosphere was lively, with the sound of laughter and chatter filling the air. The bootleg gin flowed freely, and the partygoers danced and sang the night away. Despite the illegal nature of the party, the authorities did not interrupt the festivities. The party was a success, and Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle and his friends had a memorable Labor Day weekend. The event was a testament to the actor's popularity and the bond he shared with his friends. As the night wore on, the party continued, with the guests enjoying themselves. The bootleg gin had done its job, and the party was in full swing. The night was still young, and the partygoers were ready to make the most of the Labor Day weekend. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, a well-known actor, had a previous acquaintance with Virginia Rapp, a young woman who would later become the center of a tragic mystery. In fact, Virginia's fiancé was also familiar with the actor. On the day in question, Virginia and several other party guests indulged in heavy drinking. As the day wore on, Virginia began to feel unwell. She excused herself and made her way to Fatty's private suite. Following closely behind, Fatty entered the room and locked the door behind him. What transpired in that room remains a mystery to this day. Virginia's illness and the locked door have left historians and fans questioning the events that unfolded. Despite numerous investigations, the truth has never been fully revealed. The incident has left a cloud of uncertainty and speculation surrounding the actor's career and personal life. Upon hearing Virginia's distressing screams, Maude Delmont rushed to the scene and discovered the actress in a state of despair, accusing the actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle of causing her pain. Al Semnaker, a friend of Arbuckle's, suggested an ice bath to alleviate Virginia's discomfort, but it unfortunately only served to worsen her pain. In response to the situation, two medical professionals were called upon to examine Virginia. Dr. Carho was the first to arrive, and upon examination, he suspected a bladder injury. Later, Dr. Beardsley also examined Virginia, and he concurred with Dr. Carho's assessment. The two doctors' suspicions pointed to a possible injury caused by Arbuckle, leading to a criminal investigation. The ice bath attempt, while well-intentioned, proved to be a misguided effort in providing relief for Virginia. The doctor's examination, however, provided crucial evidence in the case against Arbuckle, shedding light on the severity of the situation and the potential harm caused by the actor. After the unfortunate incident involving the actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, Virginia Rapa was taken to the Wakefield Sanatorium instead of a proper hospital. Initially, Dr. Rumfield diagnosed her with alcohol poisoning. However, Virginia's condition continued to decline, and she eventually slipped into a coma. Despite the medical team's best efforts, Virginia passed away on September 9, 1921. The decision to take Virginia to the sanatorium and the initial diagnosis of alcohol poisoning have both been subjects of controversy and debate over the years. In September of 1921, the life of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, a beloved actor known for his comedic prowess, took a dramatic turn. He was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, an event that would soon become a media circus. The investigation and trial were marked by sensationalized headlines, with the public eagerly consuming every detail of the scandal. The media's portrayal of Arbuckle was less than favorable, and his reputation suffered as a Rizzo lieutenant. However, Arbuckle's defense team was determined to clear his name. They discredited witnesses, portraying Ma Delmont, a key witness for the prosecution, as a liar and a madam. Delmont's character was called into question, and her credibility was damaged. The defense's tactics were successful in creating doubt in the minds of the jury. After three trials, Arbuckle was acquitted of all charges. Despite his acquittal, the negative publicity had already taken its toll. Arbuckle's career never fully recovered, and he died in 1933 at the young age of 46. The Arbuckle case serves as a reminder of the power of the media 
and the impact it can have on an individual's life. The actor's defense tactics, while successful in the courtroom, were not enough to repair the damage done to his reputation. The case remains a fascinating study of the intersection of celebrity, justice, and the media. The actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's career was marred by scandal and controversy. In 1921, he was accused of assault and manslaughter of a young actress named Virginia Rapp. The case became a media sensation, with reporters painting Arbuckle as a hedonistic and abusive figure, while portraying Rapp as a woman of loose character. One key piece of evidence presented by the prosecution was the testimony of a man named Al Semnaker, who claimed that Arbuckle had mentioned placing a piece of ice inside rape during a conversation. This accusation, along with other salacious details reported in the press, contributed to a widespread belief in Arbuckle's guilty tenant, however. It was later revealed that Semnaker's testimony was unreliable and likely fabricated. Despite this, the damage to Arbuckle's reputation was already done. The prosecution continued to pursue the case, attempting to defame Arbuckle as a drunken misogynist and a danger to society. In the end, Arbuckle was acquitted of all charges, but his career never fully recovered. He continued to work in the film industry, but was never able to regain the level of success he had enjoyed before the scandal. Despite the injustice he faced, Arbuckle's contributions to the world of early cinema remain significant. He was a pioneering figure in the development of slapstick comedy and a major influence on later comedians such as Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. Today, his films are still celebrated as classics of the silent era, and his legacy continues to resonate with audiences around the world. It is a testament to his talent and enduring appeal that, despite the controversies that surrounded him, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's work continues to be cherished and enjoyed by new generations of fans. Renowned for his comedic talent, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle faced a devastating scandal that would follow him for nearly a century. The actor endured three trials, with the charge downgraded to manslaughter. The trials revolved around an incident involving Virginia Rapp, a young actress who died following a party at a San Francisco hotel. Arbuckle claimed he only helped Rapp when she became ill and did not harm her. However, the scandal was plagued with misinformation and distortions. The press sensationalized the story with headlines that were often inaccurate and biased. Despite the lack of concrete evidence against Arbuckle, the public was quick to judge. The actor's career suffered greatly, and he was ostracized by the film industry. It was only many years later that the truth about the scandal began to emerge, with many people recognizing the injustice that Arbuckle had suffered. The misinformation surrounding the scandal has persisted to this day, with many people still believing the inaccurate portrayals of Arbuckle in the media. However, those who take the time to look beyond the headlines will find a different story, one of a talented actor who was unjustly accused and suffered greatly as a result. Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle's reputation suffered significant damage, which ultimately led to a boycott of his movies. The actor's career was marred by scandal, resulting in a tarnished image that he was never able to recover from. In 1921, Arbuckle was at the height of his fame, with a successful career as a comedian and filmmaker. However, everything changed when he was accused of rape and manslaughter following the death of actress Virginia Rapp. Although Arbuckle was eventually acquitted, the scandal had already taken its toll on his career. The public outcry was swift and severe, with many people calling for a boycott of Arbuckle's movies. The actor's reputation was irreparably damaged, and he became a social pariah. Despite his acquittal, the stigma of the scandal followed him for the rest of his life. Arbuckle's career never fully recovered from the scandal. He continued to work in the film industry, but he was never able to regain the level of success he had enjoyed before the accusations. The actor died of a heart attack at the age of 46, still a social pariah. The legacy of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle is a complex and tragic one. The actor's talent and contributions to the film industry are undeniable, but his reputation will always be marred by the scandal that engulfed his career. Despite this, his work continues to be celebrated and studied by film historians and enthusiasts around.